All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk to you uh, about operations management. And the thing that I'm going to focus on most is capacity, because I find that capacity issues tend to be the things that are most common in cases that we find in this course. Uh, so let's just think about capacity. What do we remember about it? And probably the best way to think about capacity to remember it is to think about your experiences uh, maybe waiting in line at the Tim Hortons while you're waiting to get your coffee or waiting in line anywhere to, to, to you know, get a seat at a restaurant or to get a seat for a movie and things like that. So um, when you have a lineup, it means that the, that the establishment doesn't have sufficient cat capacity. It's not able to process uh, customers fast enough and so people end up lining up. And that kind of segues into uh, how I like to think about capacity. So whenever I talk to my students in my operations class about capacity, I say you should think of capacity as a speed limit. So it's a speed limit. It's how fast can the operation run? So the Tim Hortons, where everybody's lining up for coffee, uh, their operation is slower than the arrival rate of customers. So customers arrive faster than the operations can run. And so the capacity is overwhelmed and people line up. And so when you discuss capacity, you will see that it's in units of speed. And so what are units of speed? You know, you think about driving a car, we talk about, you know, your car is driving at 100 kilometers per hour. It has a unit over time, 100 kilometers, kilometers is your unit over time. And that's the same thing with capacity. We'll talk about units per time. So it might be customers per hour. It might be, you know, cars produced per month or something like that. So we'll, we'll see capacity represented as a speed as units per time. And every once in a while, you'll also see it. You'll see the inverse. You'll see the reciprocal where capacity is presented as time per unit. But both of those are measures of speed. How fast can your operation run? All right. Now, when you're reporting capacity, there's just two broad things that I get you to pay attention to. One is efficiency and the other is utilization. Uh, they are similar concepts. They, they, they're talking about uh, of your total capacity, how much are you are you using? In other words, how much space or how much cushion do you have to absorb new customers? So your efficiency is the amount of capacity that you're using over the capacity that you have in normal situations. So for example, if you're driving a car, the speed limit on your road that you're driving might be 100 kilometers an hour. If you're driving 80 kilometers an hour, that means your efficiency is 80%. You're driving 80%, you're, you're using 80% of the capacity that you have under normal operating conditions. So normal operating conditions is you're obeying the law. In a business context, Normal operations means that uh, you know you're giving your employees time for lunch. They're going to the bathroom. They're making mistakes. You know, uh, equipment's being repaired. Uh, people are not working overtime, and so on. So, under normal operating conditions, how much of your capacity is that is, are you using? And if you have less than a hundred percent, that means that you have some cushion to absorb new demand should it arise. Conversely, your utilization is the amount of capacity that you're used under your ideal uh, under your ideal capacity. So, for example, your car's speed, your maximum speed that your car might drive is 200 kilometers an hour. So, if you're driving 80%, that means your utilization is 40%. You're only using 45 40% of the total speed that your car could could do. Now, in a business context, your ideal capacity would be, you know, how much can you produce if you operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no holidays, no lunch breaks, no bathroom breaks, you just worked your employees to the bones, uh, you know, how much could you produce? That would be your ideal capacity. And so you want to see again, how much, how much of your ideal capacity are you using? And, and again, these two figures give us a sense of how much cushion do we have to absorb, um, you know, new demand. The efficiency tells us uh, how much of our normal capacity do we have left? You know, if we exceed our normal capacity, if we start exceeding this, that means we're sort of going into, uh, you know, we're making our employees work unpaid overtime. Uh, there's fewer breaks, which which has a consequence, right? So, you know, uh, again, so efficiency utilization gives us a sense of how much cushion do we have to absorb new capacity. 
All right. Uh, now, when you're trying to figure out what is the capacity of your total business, so if you if you have a business, if you have an oper set of operations, oftentimes you'll have like a multi-step process. You think about going and getting coffee at Tim Hortons. You need to place your order. The cashier has to enter your order. Uh, somebody has to prepare the coffee. Somebody else has to prepare your sandwich. They need to stick it in a bag. You need to pay and all these things. So there's all these different steps to completing an order. Now, each of these individual steps has its own speed limit. Each individual step has its own capacity and the capacity of your entire operation is the capacity of your bottleneck. So what the heck does that mean? So what's a bottleneck? A bottleneck is the slowest step of your process. So let's look at this here. Here we have a simple four step process. And so for example, we could be getting a coffee. You place your order, somebody gets the coffee, they, you know, they put your bagel in a bag, you pay for it and leave. Okay, so you have the simple four step process. Now each of these steps has a speed limit. Uh, the operation one can uh, process 12 customers per hour, operation two can process 15 customers per hour, and so on. And you'll see operation three is our slowest step. It can only process 11 customers per hour. It's the slowest step. Because this is the slowest step, it is rate limiting. It is the bottleneck. The entire operation cannot produce, cannot process customers faster than 11 customers per hour. And we can think through this. So for example, if operation one worked at full speed and it processed 12 customers per hour, well, 12 customers per hour will flow through operation two. Operation two can easily handle 12 customers per hour. It could actually go faster. It could handle 15, but it's only getting 12 customers per hour coming in. So it processes 12 customers per hour going out. Operation three, however, can only process 11 customers per hour. So 12 customers come in, 11 get produced, that one customer is sitting in line. And then 11 customers per hour go through to operation four. Operation four processes those 11 customers and so on, right? So the entire capacity of the overall operation is limited by our bottleneck step, the slowest step in the process. And so what is the impact of bottlenecks? Well, the impact of bottlenecks is it causes lineups, idleness, and, well, insanity. So as I mentioned before, you're going to have a lineup forming before your operation number three. So 12 customers come in here, they get processed, go to operation two, 12 customers get processed here, go to operation three, 11 get processed, one customer waits in line. So you're going to have this, this lineup forming here. Now, operation four gets 11 customers coming in, but it could actually process 14, which means this guy, life's pretty easy out here. It doesn't have, you know, whoever's working at station number four doesn't have to work that hard. They're only getting 11 customers, whereas they have the capacity to process 14. So, you know, they process the 11 customers and then they spend the rest of the time updating their Instagram page. Meanwhile, life in operation three is madness because operation three is working full tilt all the time and it's still not fast enough. They still have a lineup forming. Other people are still waiting for them to perform, right? So those are the impacts of bottlenecks. All right, so what does this have to do with case analysis? Uh, how do we tie this back to case analysis? So generally, uh, the first thing you should be thinking about when you're looking at a case or when you're looking at a business, the question you should be asking yourself is, does the business have the capacity to meet the current demand? Are they able to meet the demand that they have well and easily? Secondly, if you increased sales, like if you implemented an option and your sales increased, does the business have the capacity to meet that future demand? Great question, because if the answer is no, if the answer is no to either of these questions, then you need to increase capacity. And this is going to cost money. You're going to, to increase capacity, you may need to buy new equipment, you may need to hire new people, you may need to build new facilities, right? So if your, if your business does not have capacity to meet current demand, or if your business does not have capacity to meet the demand that you think you are going to get after you increase capacity, after you increase sales, then you need to take action. You need to actually create new capacity. That's going to cost money. And that needs to figure 
into your auction analysis. All right. All right. So that's your brief overview of capacity. Uh, hopefully that refreshes your memory, rings some bells, and uh, I look forward to seeing you online.